For most people, Stellar Blade is a harmless piece of entertainment. You boot it up, you play it, you have a good time fighting monsters, you've got the nice looking protagonist. It's a good time, there's no agenda, worldview, politics shoved down your throat. You're simply able to enjoy it. Unfortunately, not everyone is enjoying it. You have some people who are still managing to melt down about this title, and they've convinced themselves that feminism is literally at risk. The entire Western culture they're trying to cultivate where they re-educate children, make them think like them, it's all at risk because of titles like Stellar Blade. And this, the latest, is coming from... Walter's Hound Izzy, who has worked at such treasured publications as IGN. I'm surprised not to see Polygon Kotaku on this list, but he'd be right at home there. He's got the little rainbow flag as well. Woohoo! And if we look at this article that he's penned, Stellar Blade, the upcoming sci-fi action RPG, has been thrust into the centre of video game culture wars that seem as old as gaming itself. The fight can be most clearly seen of late in the vocal pushback against Sweet Baby Inc. And as usual, all of these sorts of people, they've always got their own little agenda at play. They can't simply tell you what Sweet Baby Inc. really is, which is a, a woke consultancy, we'll use that word. They come into a studio and their only focus is not on improving video games and making them better. It's introducing real life Western identity politics, shoving it into games, basically to use video games as a vehicle to re-educate the kids and make sure going forward everyone shares that special worldview, globalism, all that sort of stuff. So that's really what Sweet Baby Inc is, but people like this, they'll try and convince you, oh no, Sweet Baby, all they do is write a few audio logs, text logs, hidden away in the game somewhere. They're totally innocent. Does it matter that the founder of Sweet Baby Inc. has literally gone on a stage to say her aim is to change the entire world? She won't stop until evil men gamers, they start to think differently. They're lobotomized and they start to see the world just a little bit like her. Until that happens, her mission isn't finished. So we all really know what Sweet Baby is. This person will try and trick a few people, but we're living in reality. And this continues, a select few Steam and Twitter users are up in arms. Now these vocal few are praising the buxom and bouncy protagonist of Stellar Blade, Eve. They say it evokes a time that they missed when women in games used to be titillating and attractive. She caters to the so-called male gaze. Oh no, the world's gonna end. And apparently Dr. Poppy Wild a senior director in media and communication. I'm sure she didn't get that degree from a cereal box or anything. I'm sure this person is a real genuine doctor when she's spending her time researching, talking about Stellar Blade. This person explains that the male gaze isn't so simple in video games. If we're thinking about gaze as creating a subject position, it isn't the same as just looking at an object because the, the avatar is a kind of active subject in that as well. Eve seems a rather active participant, but the recently released demos paint a different... What is going on here? It's a piece of entertainment. Why are you dissecting it like this, like it's something living in a test tube? It's a game. A team made it. They're trying to make some money. They've made something that looks fun. It makes people perhaps want to spend money because it looks like a good time. What is this? The lack of performance attached to Eve's body has already been noted. Eve doesn't seem to have any reaction to her own sexiness. There's no knowing facial expressions, no flipping of her long ponytail, which players can shorten in the options menu. Oh my god, feminism truly is dead. You can shorten her ponytail? She has no idle animation except when she's on a ladder. I know if I click on that, what I'm going to see, you probably do as well. She just stands there. She's sexy, but doesn't know it. She's athletic and aerobatic, but entirely controllable. If she did know... If she could move for herself, if she had self-awareness, it would shatter the illusion of many of the gamers championing her because she'd have the agencies to be able to reject them rather than simply be controlled by them. Aha, I didn't think of this. We, we've got to have a total rethink. Because just imagine that if Eve, the video game fake character, if she had that self-awareness, she'd be able to turn around, look at you through the TV and tell you just how racist, sexist, homophobic that you really are. You're a bad person. So that seems to be the argument here, that if Eve came to life like Skynet or something out of Terminator 2, if she became self-aware, 
Her first thought would be calling the players sexist because she knows what's really going on. She's strong and, and, and independent. Okay then, this is taking a bit of a turn. And this continues, based on the social media responses to news about Eve's body and outfits, clips of the way her bum and thighs jiggle as she climbs ladders. Hang on a minute, because I remember seeing there was a game recently where these types of people, they were praising the jiggle physics because it was an overweight woman's belly flapping about. And these people said, oh, bravo, applause. This is incredible representation. But if it's a well-proportioned woman whose thighs are jiggling a little bit, oh my goodness, male gaze, let's get this out of here. Who developed this? Who put this in there? They need to be looked at. You need to look at their hard drives or something. They must be evil. All this amid the pushback against games that feature diverse characters and bodies. A lot of straight men seem to be assuming themselves as the rightful target audience of not just Stellar Blade, but video games in general. Statistics show this isn't true. As of 2023, around 50% of people who play games are women. And I'm sure that this will link to a totally unbiased source. Here we go, womeningames.org. There would be no chance whatsoever that if they were the ones who conducted this study, that they weren't looking for a certain conclusion, that they didn't go in already looking for an answer, which is this, that supposedly 50% of the video game audience is women. Now, I don't really know if this is true or not, but what I have 100% seen is that there's never any context here. So, for instance, they'll just use this blanket 50%. Do you really think that 50% of people who bought Elden Ring, Dark Souls, that they were women? I think we all know the answer. If you ask a regular person in the world, a non-gamer, who do you think plays the most games? They're all going to say men. They're living in reality. But they try and fudge these numbers to suit their agenda. So for instance, it may be that there's a lot of female gamers who play on mobile phones. That may be the case. They also put in things like, if a mum goes to the shops and buys a console for a kid, that counts as a female gamer because it's her name on the receipt. So they'll throw that in there as well. They'll destroy all context and they'll just tell you that you're a sexist if you try and say, hang on a minute, there are women who play all types of games but I think we know that's a minority. It's kind of like men who cut hair for a living or they go to dance classes. There's some of them, but I don't think it's a sexist statement to say those are more so women interests in the majority of the time. But as usual, these people don't care about any of that. It's only trying to insert people into spaces that were traditionally male interests. Those are bad. Anything for anyone else, leave that alone. We, we just need to destroy male traditional instance. Let's focus on that apparently. If producers want to create video games that are only intended for male audiences, it's really unwise because they are alienating a huge demographic, basically trying to imply that if you make a game for men, you are only doing that for sexist reasons. You would only be doing that with that motivation in mind, because apparently if you put a few things in there that appeal to women, you double your sales numbers because 50% of gamers are women, right? That can't possibly be biased in any way. It's not as if business works in a way where you need to make a product that appeals to a demographic. If you try and target absolutely everyone, you'll appeal to no one. But this person seems to think the opposite. Oh, you've got to put products out that to appeal to absolutely everyone doesn't matter. You don't need to target any sort of market. I think I can see why this person is writing these lame articles, and they're not doing something else. And he goes on to say, the truth is a lot of people, men, women, non-binary, straight, queer, they all find Eve attractive. However, the way Stellar Blade is marketed is drawing in the new Gamergate 2 crowd, all the old label, they're using that. And Eve is being used as a cudgel by which to bash other feminine protagonists. And even women journalists like Kotaku's Elisa Mercant. And then if we have a look at old Elisa, it's not as if Anyone is attacking her based on her character, who she is, which is an insane individual who tweets out things like they've put on her t-shirt here. Hi, you can't be racist against white people. Thanks for tuning in. That's something she literally said and is proud of, tries to justify it. It's not like it's an old tweet from 2011 and she's trying to hide it. She believes this in 2024. People pick on her for it and then she's the victim apparently. 
despite them being the ones to say, oh, consequence culture. There's no cancel culture, it's consequence culture. Yet, if you disagree with her, oh, I'm being bullied, this is hate. And then we end here with Stellar Blade formulates Eve's relationships with NPCs in the game and thinks it's not only about whether your protagonist is beautiful, able-bodied, it's also is your villain scared, disabled, overweight? Well, what about the new Dungeons and Dragons thing I saw where apparently the villain of the castle is phobic because he didn't put a wheelchair ramp in there so that the heroes could get in, kill the villain, they couldn't access the castle without the wheelchair ramp. You've got to put those in. What a great way to make a villain scary when they care about accessibility and pronouns. Ooh! Game companies could stand to expand their horizons when it comes to attraction. Rather than just catering to the male gaze and creating hourglass figures and jiggly bits, why not consider the muscle mummies? Do you not think that Eve counts as a muscle mummy, whatever you want to call it? I mean, she seems pretty fit to me. I think that would take some work. But no, apparently being curvy fit doesn't count. You've got to be muscular in more of a, a male looking sense. You can't look feminine in any way. The dad bods. So what do you mean by that? Fat men? Disabled people. Greater representation in body types. Doesn't have to mean less attractive. In 99% of cases, it does. If you're talking about fat people and you're trying to use weird words to get around it, no, 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 you're talking about unhealthy people, which just genetically, naturally, we look at and go, yeah, they don't look as good as the attractive people, I'm sorry. It's not about making games less sexy, it's about making games more sexy for more people. No, you mean less people. The only people who think along your lines, they're a loud minority, no one cares about you, you don't buy video games or entertainment anyway, you see them as a vehicle to push your propaganda. If anyone listens to you, like these companies have been doing listening to Sweet Baby Inc. and then suddenly they're suffering in sales. No one likes their game. Look at Suicide Squad. Huge flop. It's probably going to close the studio down. They engage Sweet Baby Inc. Look where it got them. You don't want games to cater to more people. You just want them to cater to you. Yet another insane individual. Fortunately, it's all just being laughed at. Stellar Blade, it stays in the news. It's going to be a big success when it comes out, just like Hogwarts Legacy is. I look forward to more meltdowns. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.